Hey everyone, this is Mike Kramer of Mock Capital. Uh, today is Tuesday, October 7th. It's around 7 o'clock New York time. So the economic calendar for this entire week is very empty. One of the stranger periods of time where we don't really have much happening. From a, a central bank perspective, we have plenty of Fed speakers, uh, including Jay Powell himself, who's going to be giving opening remarks tomorrow around 9.15 um, New York time, but this doesn't seem like anything that's going to be, um, overly newsworthy. Um, the big thing will come on Thursday when he speaks on a panel at the IMF and there's going to be a question and answer period with a moderator. And that's going to be, I think a little bit more significant and that's going to take place at two o'clock. The other big events for the rest of this week will be the treasury auctions tomorrow at one o'clock New York time. We're going to get a 10 year auction. And then on Thursday at 1 o'clock, you're going to get a 30-year auction. So, you know, these auctions are very important because rates have gone up a lot. And we're going to want to see if these auctions continue to show some signs of improvement or if they continue to worsen. Uh, the last 10-year auction didn't go very well. Uh, the 30-year auction didn't go very well. So these are going to be important auctions to pay attention to. The three-year auction today looked like it did fairly well. Uh, with a, a pretty decent direct acceptance and indirect acceptance rates, um, and it didn't price too far. Uh, it priced basically in line with the one issue price. So th these auctions are important to just be aware of because if bond yields start moving, you're going to see U.S. markets start moving with them, equity markets. And so that will take us right to the NASDAQ, which is our first you know, major index. And when we look at the NASDAQ, there had clearly been a, a trend line here that's formed uh, you had three touches, four touches off the top. Today, it looks like we broke through it. And, you know, the only uh, way we know if this is a meaningful event or not is by getting confirmation and by holding above that trend line. It looks like there's a possibility and a good chance that the, it's going to hold because it looks like we may have gapped above it, uh, came down and even tested it at one point today and uh, managed to hold on to it. But again, one day doesn't make a trend, so you're going to want to see if this really holds. The key here is that the close was pretty weak. Um, in fact, you can see we closed under all the intraday highs. We even closed below the midday lows. And this is sort of important because, again, this seems like a pretty negative close, a pretty weak close. And so you're going to want to see tomorrow... Um, the NASDAQ really take out this 15,332 area because if it can do that, it probably sets up an opportunity to test this region up here at 15,415. This is a fairly important region. It's been a region that's been in focus now for some time, really going all the way back uh, to the summer months um, because we can see that this was a level that was support and resistance back here at the very beginning of the decline in July and August, and then it acted that, like that again uh, in at the end of August and the middle of September. And so we're going to want to see if that uh, continues to be a major level of resistance, because if we can get through that, it does set up obviously higher prices and maybe even a retest of this broken big downtrend that's in place. Um, and clearly, if we have more weakness to open tomorrow, if we were to gap lower, uh, we could be looking at, you know, given the size of the advance, we could be looking at a target of around 15,130 to 15,080. Um, what's interesting is that most of this rally, I think, was predicated on, you know, a short gamma position that had been built up in the markets, uh, basically due to the way options uh, are hedged and the way option betting was taking place. And that short gamma, uh, can, that created basically a squeeze in the market, a short covering rally. And that, and now that, that, that we've moved back into a positive gamma regime, we've seen markets stabilize. And that's why they've been sort of stalling out now at these higher levels. So with this uh, market back in a, a positive gamma regime, it likely means that market makers are going to be sellers of strength and buyers of weakness. And that's what's helping to keep the market uh, somewhat contained. And that's why you know, if if you get auctions that don't go well or go better than expected at one o'clock in the afternoon uh, tomorrow, it could really act to catapult the market in really either direction. When we move over to the Dow, the Dow is sort of the uh, the index or the average that we've been talking about now for some time. Uh, Thirty four thousand two hundred right now has become 
a level of uh, resistance. You can see it was support here, support here, uh, resistance, resistance. There's really not much in terms of a clear pattern here in the Dow. Clearly, we, again, didn't have the greatest close today across most of the indexes. You can see we, at least we, we closed below all the intraday highs on the Dow and we're unable to close above resistance at 34,180 or so. Um, and this is important because, again, if we can take these highs out early tomorrow, it does set up a possibility for the Dow to have more room to run, uh, potentially back up even to this 34,700 region. Um, and likewise, if this were not to be, uh, if we were to see weakness tomorrow to start the day and this low of 33,933 were taken out, um, we could be looking at our first gap fill here at 33,825. And then potentially, you know, no real support again until about 33,560 or so, which had been an important level. It is worth noting and I guess pointing out that there may be one of these same scenarios we've seen in uh, the Dow before, which was similar to this rising flag pattern. You can see it's rising and certainly this was a cup and handle with a rising handle. Uh, in this pattern, it's more of just a straight rising flag pattern, which appears to maybe be forming and, and this again would be more of a negative pattern suggesting we undercut and move down to these lows but again this is something we need to watch and really for confirmation of this you're going to want to take out this midday low of 33,993 from yesterday um, and then of course when we move over to the DAX the DAX is in a similar situation to that of the the NASDAQ with this trend line the DAX had this trend line going here and we had extended it lower uh, for some time, I, I had it more drawn like this, and we kept gapping over it and then coming back below it. And so now more recently, we just gapped above it again. And the question is, do we move back below it? Or do we really just have a new trend line here in place with these tops in in in, in mind? And so again, uh, the DAX today, uh, from at least Friday, we, we rallied right into Friday and we've given back these gains. The DAX, again, uh, is really more in a downtrend, um, and you're going to want to see the DAX uh, not only move above this high tomorrow, but you're really going to want to see more of a decisive break above this downtrend, which is something we haven't, we haven't had yet or experienced really since going back to the middle of September. Uh, you can also see that this region here around 15,001, 65 or so has been a fairly difficult region for the DAX to meaningfully get through. Um, and there is a lower gap here at 14,950. This almost looks like an island reversal pattern, given that we had this really clear break and then another clear break uh, again. But for this to hold, you're going to need to see that the DAX continues to move up, takes out this high, takes out this trend line and starts moving even beyond this 15,300 if we were to fill this gap that island reversal pattern would obviously be invalidated and then with the the FTSE the FTSE um, again has been a really difficult uh, index to track it, it seems to always find support around 7,300 it's been tested now on several occasions it seems like this area up around here around 7,700 has been a very strong level of resistance it had looked like maybe we were finally going to break down and then all of a sudden you know the footsie gets a second wind and it moves higher the question really becomes you know what is going to happen here uh, because it seems to me like it's a little bit of a, a difficult situation to assess and when we look at the footsie we can see that there's been some support here at 7400 this is kind of like a stilt-like feature where you just got a straight line advance on looks like straight air. And uh, this is sort of, a, a, in my experience, as we've seen patterns like this, you've seen them in the in the NASDAQ and the S&P as well. These just aren't, they just tend to not be stable patterns. And, and so, you know, when we look more closely here, it almost looks like there's also a downtrend, which is forming with a descending triangle, which... If that is the case, and we would know that by undercutting this low at 7,400, 7, it likely results in a decline back to 7,350 or so. Likewise, if we were able to gap above this high, um, this would make room for us to probably move back up to 7,465 or so. 
But again, this is sort of a situation where it looks like it's going to resolve one way or the other uh, in the next couple of days because you can see that when we just kind of scroll through, we're getting to a point where the downtrend is either going to, we're running out of room, right? So either we're going to trade through the downtrend and the downtrend is going to be no more or we're going to break below the downtrend um, and we're going to break below support and move back to the lower end of the range. And that's just how it looks set up to me at this point. Um, again, I just don't like the fact that you have this sort of stilt looking, uh, advance with this sort of, uh, set up here with this downtrend and, and this, um, support level. But that's, uh, again, just kind of looking at it from a, just a purely technical pattern recognition sort of vantage point. So anyway, that's, uh, all I have today. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Bye.